All right, let's get into this, man. Let's yep. let's get into uh, all of this good stuff. Sure. From your from your career, when did a few good men come across your desk? Your so I was doing a a uh, six week summer series for CBS. Yes. That no one would ultimately watch because in the summer yeah. in 1991, it, it was all reruns. There was no original programming in the summer, so people just kind of went away. Yeah. Um, but it was created by Rob Reiner and Christopher Guest, and it was. A ridiculous opportunity for me. And so I'm having lunch every day with Rob, working on that. Mm -hmm. And one day he says, you know, my next film was a very successful Broadway play. It's called A Few Good Men. And uh, I've got Tom Cruise. I think I'm going to get Nicholson. There's a part of Tom's co-counsel that you're kind of perfect for. I have an offer out to Jason Alexander. If Seinfeld gets picked up for season two, he won't be available. Castle Rock, Rob's company, right. also Did produced Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Right. So he said if Seinfeld gets picked up, which was a big question mark because it was on Friday nights that only aired four episodes, it was a big chances where this thing was going away. Uh huh. And I, uh, my prayers, along with Jason Alexander's prayers, <laughs> amounted to his career doing very well and me getting a few good men and getting a little busy in the 90s because of it. Right. Yeah. So that's how you got... So that's that's ultimately how it happened, yeah. All right, so now we've had uh, Rob Reiner has been here before, yeah. and I told you before we've had him, Kevin Bacon, and Noah Wiley mm. all tell their from their perspective right. the final scene of Jack Nicholson. You want me on that wall? You need me on that wall? Then the, you know, you can't handle the truth, etc. The Colonel Jessup soliloquy. Yes, yep. That you have an interesting. Well, so role I have. In. Well, if I, I had a nickel for every time someone a fan of that movie. Which there are a lot of, let's face it. It's on every 11 minutes. It's a remote drop. It's a remote drop. Like, no matter where you are right. in the film. Right. It's like, that. for me, it's that. Uh, the Fugitive is in that. Goodfellas, Goodfellas. I'm guessing. Yes. Yeah. Where, no matter where you are, it's like, oh, right, two hours to go. I don't care. I'm just dropping the, I'm yeah. dropping the remote. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, correct. Uh, and Casino, I was uh, fortunately involved in another movie that for some people, is that that's a similar thing, or Suspects. Those three. Um, but a few good men, you know, I'd been impersonating Nicholson my whole stand-up back, how I started. Mm -hmm. So to just be around him was bizarre and surreal. <laughs> and my character has no, no dialogue with him. We shake hands when we meet in his office in the beginning of the movie. So by the time he gets to the courtroom and he singles me out, who's going to do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? <laughs> <laughs> what? So clearly... Aaron Sorkin, the writer, yeah. who was a very young pup at yeah. that point in his career, he'd only done the Broadway play that he wrote, <laughs> wanted everyone to know that Jessup was also anti-Semitic. Yeah. There's no other reason to point out you, Lieutenant Weinberg. Right, exactly. <laughs> Who's going to do it? You, Tom Cruise? Are you going to do it, the Jew? <laughs> Are you going to stand a post? So if I had a nickel for every time someone on the street has pointed that out. And also, <laughs> as a question, they'll say, Kevin... Uh, I got to ask. I'm so sorry. Maybe you get this a lot. When he says, who's going to do it? You, you, Lieutenant Weinberg. Why is he <laughs> picking you out? You've done nothing to upset the man other than walking across the desert for 40 years uh, <laughs> without a map. Uh, so, so when it came to Nicholson on the stand doing the soliloquy, I'm watching him. I don't know if Rob said, but Jack shot for 10 days. Um, we'll speak out of turn. Why not? He made five million for 10 days, yeah. half a million dollars a day. And I asked him, when you make half a million dollars a day, do you hit the snooze alarm? <laughs> or you just or do run. you race into the yeah, shower you just get in there. to start that half a million dollar clock? Um, so he only had five days in the courtroom. That's it. To shoot everything. And at the end of the five days, I'm sure Rob explained uh, they weren't quite done with Jack. But, but so Rob had to go to Jack and say, I can't afford to pay you to come back another day. But if you out of the goodness of your heart, come back for just a couple more shots. I'll get you out by noon, by 12 noon, I promise. Right. No matter where we are, you're, you're whatever you need, Robbie, I'm here. <laughs> so after watching him do this, this speech yeah. for so many days, and I've been saying it to my rearview mirror on the drive home, you know, because it's so brilliantly written, my goodness. Um, when that 12 noon time came, Jack was seated like this, looking at the judge where you are doing, Jack was doing at that point off camera lines where the camera was over Jack right. onto the judge. Right. And so Rob said, uh, cut, that's a wrap on Jack Nicholson. Everyone goes 
you know, bananas and lots of hugs and kisses. And I quietly went over to Rob and said, look, I've got this damn thing memorized. And <laughs> if it's helpful at all to AJ, the actor who played the judge, um, I'm happy to sit on the stand and, and, and do the off camera lines for him. Not for a goof, not to entertain right. the crew, but, and again, only if it's helpful to him to have someone do that. Right. I'll do it as Jack is what I'm saying. Um, and so the actor playing the judge loved the idea. And so we did it. And yes, after I finished the first one, the 150 or whatever crew member did break into ridiculous applause, which was not the intent, <laughs> no, honestly. You're being a professional. You're being a prof you're being professional. <laughs> yeah, it was appreciated. I'm not going to lie to you. I might have taken a bow, but <laughs> I was there for that actor. And so the biggest compliment was back then, the directors would have to go to, <laughs> for you kids out there, what was called dailies. Mm -hmm. They would process the film. Yes, they used film. And uh, two days later, the director could look at those yeah. scenes. So Rob came back after going to dailies a couple days later and said, it took me four, because I was off camera again, mm -hmm. as was Jack. So we went from Jack right into me. And he said it took four takes before I realized it was no longer Jack. And I don't know that there's a better compliment. No, I no. mean, not at all. No. Yeah. Did you did you lay into the Lieutenant Weinberg line as well? Did <laughs> you lay bit. into that? You know what? I wanted to be there for the other actor. I did not put a little extra spit on it. <laughs> it was already there. You, Lieutenant Weinberg. I mean, who's going to do it? You, the Hebrew? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, you know. The fact that Fantastic. people ask as a question, really. Right. I mean. But the other the other three who have preceded you from the film in that guest chair all said that when Jack was doing it off camera, he he didn't skip a beat. It he was never the missed, same thing every single for time. For five days, he never missed a syllable. I mean, Amazing. I talk about it in my stand back how I'd never seen an actor turn it on and off right. as easily as he could. Because when he when when Rob Reiner yelled action, he was letter perfect, never missed a syllable. But when Rob said cut, mm. Jack looked like he'd been stoned for three days. <laughs> I'd never seen anything like it, right? Just he'd stand up and he was so gregarious and goofy, right. which is also not what I expected. Really? I thought he'd be aloof. You know, someone who at that point, even in ninety two, he'd been cool to five generations somehow, you know? Right. Or so it seemed. And and I just pictured him. Oh, there's Jack over there. Mm -hmm. You know, look at him, but don't talk to him. And uh, But he was the most approachable, gregarious of, of any giant, iconic movie star I've ever worked with. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.